What's up guys, Tao here. So for the past few days, I've been testing out these two graphics cards. Um, on my right is the Vega, uh, Sapphire Vega 64, 8GB VRAM. And on my left is a Sapphire RX 5600 XT, 6GB VRAM. So just to see uh, which card performed better in the Mac OS, Mac OS, well actually it's Hackintosh. And uh, there are some, some interesting results. If you are a Hackintosh user, or if you're thinking of upgrading, or if you're thinking of building one yourself, you might want to keep watching. First thing I want to point out that this uh, Sapphire RX 5600XT is the first batch Sapphire um, shipped out. So the BIOS, you can't really update the BIOS to gain better performance, which with the other batch you can. So if you do own one of those Sapphire 5600XT, please go on the website to check and uh, against the part number, um, the make sure the part number is on the list and then you can upgrade the BIOS to gain better performance. But this one, you cannot for now at least, hopefully Safra will change that uh, later on. So, so this card is really capable of a lot of games. Right, the system tested on runs on the Intel i7-8700, uh, which is my slightly older processor replaced by the i9-1900K, and also 16 gig RAM, and Gigabyte Z390 Elite motherboard, and a one terabyte Sabrent uh, NVMe M.2 SSD. The system OS tested on is the Mac OS Catalina 10.15.6. It is the latest version as of this video. And hopefully we're gonna do another test after the 10.16 um, or 11 came out. And uh, but for now, this is the 10.15.6. Now because the RX 5600 XT cannot run in Mojave, I only run in Catalina or above. So I have to do a fresh an open core uh, in install uh, just to make sure the system is 100% clean so these two cards can be on the same playing field. The open core version as of this video is 0.6.1, it is the latest version. The benchmark software I use for testing are the Geekbench 5, uh, Luxmark 3.1 and the uh, Unigen Valley as well as the Bruce X 5K. Now the Unigen Valley, in my opinion, is kind of redundant within the macOS because they use OpenGL and in macOS you mainly use the Metal and OpenCL but we're gonna test it anyway. Bruce S 5K, uh, that's two seconds video and I know it's not real world test but that will put a lot of stress on the graphics card so I think it's, um, it's one of the tests to go and um, everybody else use out there so I'm gonna use that as test. Geekbench 5 we will test the Metal and the OpenCL performance, Luxma 3.1 we will test the OpenCL. So within the uh, Final Cut Pro, uh, we're gonna render and export the Bruce X 5K and just to see which one render in less time and export in less time. So after countless GPU swapping, testing and install, uninstall, so after a long while, I realized that there is a boot flag uh, within the bootloader that actually affect the benchmark result. So the boot flag is the disabled GFX firmware. So that actually has some impact on the test result. And especially in Final Cut Pro, uh, the version I use is 10.4.8 and 10.4.9. 10.4.9 um, is the latest version, but uh, with or without that boot flag actually got a different result. So that made me think that boot flag may also impact the benchmark result of the benchmarking software. So I scratched all the testing results and did again. Man, that was a lot of testing. Before I show you guys the result, let me just explain this table. Um, on the left, that is the two graphics card. And on the top, that is the benchmarking software. Within each software, it will have different sections. So the Geekbench 5, we will test Metal, OpenCL, Luxmark 3.1. There are three different scenes and testing the OpenCL and the Unigen Valley and uh, it's OpenGL and I'll give you a score. Now each graphics card, we will test it with and without the boot flag. So if you see two, that means 
is with boot flag. If it's fourth, that means without boot flag. So that's also happened to the Vika 64. All right, here are the results. Let's have a look at the uh, both graphics card. The first one is RX 5600 XT. So as you can see, when it used without boot flag, it seems to have a better performance um, in Geekbench 5. And also in Lexmark, they uh, have this, the performance is quite similar or the result is quite similar and also the OpenGL performance in Unigen Valley the performance is pretty similar so the, the major difference within the RX 5600 XT testing is the Geekbench 5 now in the Vega 64 with boot flag seems to have a better performance in Geekbench 5 and again the Lexmark and OpenGL which is the Unigen Valley seems like performance quite stable again the big difference is on the Geekbench 5 now if we look across these two cards as you can see the Vega 64 we outperform the RX 5600 XT easily on the Geekbench 5 so that is the metal and open CL performance and also if you look at the Luxmark 3.1 so the Vega 64 has much better performance regardless with or without boot flag so yeah, so it's interesting to see the Vega 64 uh, still has a better performance within the Metal and OpenCL, which is kind of not a surprise. The Vega 64 has 64 compute units, where the RX 5600 XT only has 32. And also Vega 64 has more stream processors uh, compared to the RX 5600 XT. But on the Unigen Valley, which is OpenGL performance, the RX 5600 XT has slightly better performance, um, which kind of translate to in gaming mostly. Um, so therefore, the RX 5600 XT may have an advantage in gaming. Um, I believe that's because of the Navi architecture, so it's more efficient compared to the old Vega architecture. So that's kind of expected. Um, the newer generation has more efficiency and therefore that shows uh, that shows in games all right now let's talk about the bruce x 5k in final cut pro um, now this is a little bit complicated um, as if you are a final cut pro user and uh, throughout the version of the mac os or the version of the final cut pro you may realize um, different version has slightly different performance there's no difference within this particular one as well so the latest version is 10.4.9 um, I've been using 10.4.8 in Mojave for a very long time. I've been really happy with it. And when I switched to 10.4.9, something feel a bit weird and uh, the performance has dropped a little bit, I feel like. So the test result actually shows that as well. Uh, before we go ahead to show you the result, uh, let me just again explain this table. Now, each card will test it with the boot flag or without. So each version of the Final Cut Pro, for example, 10.4.9, we have two session uh, render and export. So the lower the number, the better. So the lower number, the quicker. So therefore it's better. So that competes with the 10.4.8. So that applied to both graphics card. All right, here are the results. Uh, first thing first, I wanted to uh, bring your attention into these two versions of Final Cut Pro. As you can see, uh, 10.4.8 in general cost board has better performance uh, that's the render time and exporting time so you actually experience a little bit uh, quicker in terms of render and export now 10.4.9 in my opinion it's not slow it just um, it just export a little bit a little bit longer now the fun fact is that the 10.4.9 when you export to this to to uh, H.264 codec, um, it has a bigger file, uh, around about 11.3, 11 mic, where the 10.4.8 export around about 5 mic in terms of file size. That's quite interesting. Uh, so I'm not sure why it does that. Um, so therefore, the render time, I think, uh, the render time and exporting time may be a bit longer. But hey, um, I'm not entirely sure on that, why they changed the file size. So within the RX 5600 XT, so we can see without the boot flag, uh, the course board within 10.4.9 and the 10.4.8. So it seems like it has better performance without the boot flag. Uh, 
So in the 10.4.9, uh, the render is uh, 9.46 seconds, export is 17.31. So within the uh, 10.4.8, the uh, Final Cut Pro, the render time is much shorter, uh, 6.66 seconds. The export time around uh, run about the same compared to with the blue flag. Now the the key the key uh, performance difference actually is on the Vega 64 within the 10.4.8 version of Final Cut Pro. You can see with the boot flag, uh, it's 5.67 seconds, which is fantastic result. And export time is 9.4. Um, that performance right there is fantastic. So even um, in the 10.4.9 Final Cut Pro, the Vega 64 performed really, really good as well. 7.90 render. 13.74 export. Um, without the boot flag, uh, seems a little bit uh, longer in terms of render and export, but by no means is very, very slow. So on the 10.4.8, without boot flag, the VX64, 7.13 seconds, and the export is 13.80. So to me, the Vega 64 has better performance within the 10.4.8 Final Cut Pro version with the boot flag. So it seems like the Vega 64 has some better performance with the boot flag, where the RX5600 XT uh, performed well without boot flag. Uh, so again, the boot flag is disabled GFX firmware. Uh, if you are using the Vega 64, I would suggest you use that blue flag. Uh, if you use the new uh, Navi card, you might wanna get rid of it, so you might have a better performance. All right, so what are those results telling us? So in my opinion, the Vega 64 um, has an advantage of more compute units and more stream processor. So 64 stream units and uh, 4096 stream processors. So that actually will have a huge impact on the uh, result, which is advantage. Um, where the RX 5600 XT, it's uh, the architecture. The architecture is new and is more efficient, but less compute units and less stream processor. And um, the Vega 64, in my opinion, is really really good a workstation graphics card and for productivity, even a scientific uh, workflow. So, cause it's more cores, more compute unit. But for gaming, the RX 5600 XT uh, may have a, a advantage because of the more efficient cores and more efficient architecture. So, and also they use either DirectX 12 or OpenGL. So in Windows, they use Vulkan. So they may neutralize those engines much, much more efficient compared to the Vega 64. Another advantage of the RX 5600 XT is on the cooling. Now, if you own the reference card, you will know as soon as you start playing game or a GPU t uh, intense workflow, the fan starts spinning. It's like you are right next to a jet engine. It's gonna about to take off. So it's so loud. So where the 50, 56 and XT, you've got two fans, it's much, much cooler, especially when you're gaming. You will hear the noise, but it's nowhere as loud as this this thing. This thing is so loud. Oh, and before I forget, if you are the new Navi card user, the RX 5000 series card, uh, make sure you have this particular boot flag in your config list, either in Clover or OpenCore. Without it, it simply won't boot. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. This is it. Um, hopefully this video helped you guys in some ways. Um, please share a comment uh, if you uh, want to share your system config or the graphics you use or even the testing result, uh, either the benchmarking or in the Final Cut Pro. Other people may get benefit out of the comments. So yeah, as always, see you guys in the next video.